Hi guys, this is Lisha from Scarlet Moon Creations and I'm back with a new deck walkthrough. This is the Spirit Keepers Tarot Revelation Edition, uh, the third edition by Benabel Wen. And I ordered this deck earlier this year. This is an indie published deck. Um, and yeah, so I like did an unboxing on my Instagram, which is like literally as soon as I got it. Uh, and I talked about how the corner came a little dented. Um, the box, the shipping box was all like uh, crushed on that corner. But uh, this is the extent of the damage. So I'm like, that's fine. But this is the box. Um, I definitely wanted this deck because of its uniqueness and it being very uh, heavily uh, symbolic or heavy with symbols and very esoteric. Uh, Watching Benabel kind of create this um, when she gave us some behind the scenes looks at it, um, I was made me very intrigued. So I heard about the first edition, and please excuse me, I don't remember the names of the first two editions. Um, but the first edition was black and white, and this is the inside of the cover. I know there's meanings to all of these jewels and symbols. Some of them I know. Others I know because Benabel mentioned them. And then even more I recognize but don't know the meaning of. And then I'm sure there's definitely going to be lots more that I have no clue about. Um, this is a magnet. So that's nice. Um... There's a certificate of authenticity, which is very cool, um, given that Penabelle is basically like, okay, I'm done with deck making, so that's it. Signed and everything is cool. Um, I guess that matters, really, if I plan to sell it, but I don't know. And a free little art print. Um, this deck is influenced like the tarot is um by lots of esoteric things um things like so uh the hermetic order of the golden dawn the kabbalah uh angels and um egyptian mythology and uh all kinds of things, guys. I can't remember off the top of my head. You can always go to Benabelle's website. So this deck does come with a little white book. Uh, for those of us who ordered it, we also got a um, link to a digital big chunky book that we could then have printed. I haven't had mine printed yet. I honestly wanted to start off this deck with no prior information really um or no in-depth information about the cards and stuff i know the basics the major arcana um the first key is a significator and there are three versions like the thoth tarot and i'll get into that um and then the minor arcana is split into two realms seven upper realms and the seven lower realms the major arcana being the primordial realm. There's an intro. Spirit Keeper Tarot's Journey Back to the Cradles of Civilization. This is a deck that integrates ancient theologies from disparate corners of the world. I created the Spirit Keeper's Tarot with a singular mission in mind to design the most powerful occult technology possible. Whether I succeeded, I... In that mission is not for me to say, but for each holder of the cards to discern. May these cards meet you where you are, then 
lead you higher hallowed ground to higher ha hallowed ground and so i like that you know we don't just get color we get texture that feeling like i'm looking at something that has texture um to it oh there are um Elemental and astrological correspondences on the major arcana cards, um, as well as uh, logos and uh, letters from the proto canonite and or Phoenician alphabet. Uh, the three significators are the initiate, the seeker, and the keeper, which I'll get into when I show those. And then, so yeah. This, not really images here, we just get basic text. Uh, and the minor arcana, scepters, chalices, swords, and orbs. And the this little chart shows you how they correspond to Rider Waite Smith and the Thoth Tarot. Um, there's elemental associations there. Um, and key personal sensitivity points where it looks like she's using ascendance or descendants or um, the medium quality. Quality. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Um, there are I Ching and I Ching trigrams and Mayan numerals on the minor arcanas as well. And then the book has them grouped by numbers, so all the threes are together, all the twos, all the fours, all the fives, and so on. Um, and then the court cards are archangels, shields, shining ones, and heralds. And you can see from this little chart how they um, correspond with Rider Waite Smith and the Thoth Tarot. Um, again... I Ching trigrams and uh, Mayan numeral systems on them. Again, grouped by type, so all the archangels are together, all the shields are together, all the shining ones are together, and all the heralds are together. And yeah, back to the numbers all the fives, all the six, sevens, eights. Um, so pretty easy to find even without using the table of contents um, and a little bit about Benabel there at the end and I Ching trigram correspondences at the very back. So this is what you get when you buy the deck, like all of that. Now, like I said, <laughs> I haven't done anything with this since I did an unboxing. This is the back. And it's like fully in color. Um, so let's put that also to the side. And bring out my little stand here. And let's look at the cards. So the deck is gilded, it's shiny gold mirror gloss. You can see me kind of there. And as you can see, the cards are not at all damaged from um, going through that box, a shipping box, going through it to get here. This is the box. I don't know, like with these little jewels in the center, and you can see it in the um, on the box as well. Like, and of course the gold gilding and all this fancy. Whoops, uh, these uh, patterns and whatnot. It definitely gives. Uh, what do you call it? this is a sacred object feel a sacred spiritual object right <laughs> all right so let's look at the cards of the deck 
This is the uh, initiate, one of the uh, significator cards. So you're supposed to pick one depending on your purpose for your readings. And so the initiate uh, card is about having to take the proverbial first step on a, of a thousand mile journey. The seeker card here also a significator, another card zero. This is you in search of a specific guidance and divine counsel. Then the Keeper card, the last of the zero significators, is uh, the key for spirit contacts connecting you to the angelic or divine realms for Akashic readings or mediumship readings. So that's those three. I just wanted to say that off the bat. I This is the third edition. It's... Uh, well known within the tarot community as Benabel is so I'm sure a lot of people know already that there are three significators but I wanted to let that be known so the Magus the Priestess the Empress I just like how the background and the fore like you could you could see I'm just oh how she made the background like a little fade a little far away like the way I have my camera set you can see like this stuff back here is a little bit fuzzy that's how the falls and things in the background of this card are and that's just really cool artwork wise the emperor. Commander of Intellections. So the Majors have little titles on them as well. The Lovers. Different from uh, the Lovers of the Rider Wade Smith. Um, drawn a blank on the Lovers from with Toth Tarot, but very different, very unique. The Chariot, the Force, so instead of Strength, and you decided to use, uh, have this card in number eight. The Erudite, which I like. I like better than that traditional. Rider Waite Smith card. The Wheel of Life. Not usually in this position. The Chancellor. Angel of Justice. So some positions have changed. The Outlaw or Hangman is a little different. The Reaper for death. It's my card, my scorpion. <laughs> the Angel. Temperance. The Demon, which I appreciate. Um, not the usual devil card, and not number. The tower. So I'm not sure if it's in the little white book, but in the bigger book she sent, I'm definitely sure that um, the changes to the order and the titles um, are explained. The healer. The Necromancer. So you can see the influences of uh, various cultures and esoteric uh, tra 
traditions, I guess. <laughs> Apocalypse. Which you would think, word-wise, would be like the tower, but it's not. The New World Order. Okay, so now we're in the scepters, which are the wands. That those were the major arcana, now the minors. Hollowed flame, ace of scepters, the awakening. Holy Grail, Ace of Chalices. Like in the book, each are together. Um, all four suits of each number are all together. Sacred Word, Ace of Swords, the Crowning, Bread of Life. Ace of Orbs, so the deepening. Now the twos, the discerning one, two of scepters. Ooh, I feel like it's not. The joined one, two of chalices. The Blind Seer, I love the title of this card, Two of Swords, like she knows things, and Two of Orbs, Orbs is a reminder, the tension, Our uh, Orbs are in place of pentacles or coins, that's why I've got mine on the side here. The Three, Three of Scepters, the Politic. The Kindred, Three of Chalices. We got some runes. The Bereaved, I like that name. Three of Swords. And ooh, ooh, I, ooh. I like the writing palely in the background. Three of Orbs, The Mason. Archangel of Glory. So the Archangels, uh, in place of the kings, if I'm remembering correctly, Angel of Art and Grace, uh, Archangel of Scepters, there, I guess. Archangel of Healing or Cups, Angel who solves and purifies. Archangel Commander, the Angel of Storms and Battles, so swords. That shield is trippy. Archangel of Mysteries, Angel who illuminates the shadow. Orbs there. The Golden Shield, the Queen's equivalent. Sanctum of Splendor. Uh, uh, queen of scepters there ivory shield is sanctum of the immaculate the queen of cups or chalices the scarlet shield sanctum of the valiant the queen of swords that sword Let me, can I get it to that wow the detail Oh, come on. You could do this. You could do this. Ooh. That detail. And, like, she went in here and gave you color and tiling for each little piece. That's amazing. So, yeah. Queen of Swords. The Ebony Shield. Sanctum of Treasures. Should be the Queen of Orbs or Queen of Coins and pe or Pentacles. The Shining Flame. The Shining Ones are, uh, what do you call it? The Knights. 
Nine of Scepters, Embers of the Salamander. We've got a little, a little Drake there. The Shining Waters. Waves of the Undine. Undine? Undine? Uh, the Knight of Cups. The Shining Gale. Winds of the Sylph, Knight of Swords, just so much, like, I want to pet it, but I know it's a card, all of it is one texture, but the image of texture, I, I don't know that the words are coming out properly, but it makes me want to touch it more, and it enhances the experience to me. The Shining Quarry... Caverns of the Gnome, so Nine of cup, um, Coins or Pentacles. Herald of the Flame, so the Heralds are Pages. Page of Scepter, Waken the Brilliance. So the court cards also have little titles on the bottom, as you can see. Herald of the Waters, uh, Inspire the Prodigy, the Page of Cups, pretty cool, like, look at that, ah, Herald of the Winds, Ventures of the Dauntless, the Page of Swords, very interesting, very diverse deck um, age and I guess race wise heralds of the earth dedication of the adept the last page the page of coins or pentacles that is absolutely good I don't I'm like how do you do that in this in this process so all right back to the numbers in the minors um the demiurge or i'm not sure how to pronounce that four of scepters i like it the hollow void four of chalices like the tree i just Like, you can still see her line work. The Covalescent Four of Swords. I like that title more than others for that card. The Conservador Four of Orbs. Interesting. Very interesting. Juxtaposition for that. The Contender Five of Scepters. So we're on the fives. The Grotesque, Five of Chalices, interesting, the Grotesque, hmm, Hec the Hector, Five of Swords, interesting, there's like two, three separate scenes going on here, not the first card that has that, but yeah. The Vagabond, Five of Orbs, like the quilt, the quilt, just, ah, uh, as, as, if this was food, it's just because I'm filming this the day before Thanksgiving, I, this is what comes to mind, Ben and Belle put her foot in this, like, if this was food, the champion six of scepters there's so much detail and i am a person who likes a lot of detail in my cards like the more the merrier the memory keeper six of chalices this is these are so cute so cute i like how we've kept the childhood part of that the quester six of swords 
Again, I like that. And we've got a little, little mercury there. The giver. Six of orbs. Wow. I like this this imagery better than most for this card. Sevens now. The dark horse. Come on, don't do this. Uh Seven of Scepters. That's a pretty cool card. Cooler than that card usually comes off. And it, it comes off pretty cool. The Corrupter. Seven of Chalices. The Rogue. Seven of Swords. interesting this is different and just the sky lines that she does are so awesome the gardener I'm not sure what what is what is is that a tree though there's a bird in a tree yes okay seven of orbs the sharpshooter. Keep having to adjust my thing because sometimes they get too close. I like this so much better than the Rider Wade Smith because that card just looks like eight sticks in the air. Like it doesn't imply movement to me. This does. Um and we've got two or three scenes going on here, but not quite what one would expect. The Defector. The Defector. Eh, come on, come on. Eight of Chalices. Ooh, a mermaid. The Eight of Swords. The Cap Door. Hmm. The Journeyman, Eight of Orbs. Hmm. Huh. Very different. The Pugilist. Nine of Scepters. It's very interesting. That's not what I have a picture for that title, so I can't wait to read to see what I pick up. The wish granted, nine of chalices. Cool. The haunt, yes, nine of swords. And like, look at this. And then the shadow, wow. Benabel. The eminence, nine of orbs. The burdened one. Here we go, here we go. The ten of scepters. Come on, there we go. This this is this is just insane, to be perfectly honest. The joyous one. Ten of chalices. The Destroyer, Ten of Swords, wow, an actually violent one. The Dynasty, Ten of Orbs, and we've got the complete, um, what's the word? The Tree of Life, <laughs> me trying to focus it. The complete Tree of Life, so let's try and shuffle these. And uh, I'm sure they're fine, to be perfectly honest. But we're going to do it anyway. Let me, let me zoom out again. Um, 
it's a little stiff, but it's brand spanking new. And yeah, they shuffle, they shuffle okay. <laughs> the gilding is okay. And I like the cardstock. Uh, I think the gilding is a little heavy for my taste. Um, I don't. I only have like one or two other gilded decks, so I don't know. But compared to those, but I feel like this gilding will stand out to whatever uh, better. So, a very nice deck. I honestly can't wait to dive into it more. I will probably be... Well, my plan is to, like, start out with just reading with the tarot knowledge I already have. And then um, do that for a while. And then, you know, get the book printed and really dive into an in-depth deck study. Um, partially because, you know, I already have plans to study other decks before now, uh, before this one, because I did buy quite a few in the whole past year, uh, but I also just, I want to experience this deck without being told. I want the intuitive feeling as much as possible at first, just to get an idea. So yeah, a pretty awesome, awesome deck. I love the artwork. Like, it's already... I wish I could sit here and just be like, yeah, so this card makes me feel... Like, this is very, very peaceful. And that's without, like, the titles. Um, she just looks so completely at peace and, like, confident without cockiness. This one is um, very much the learning, the um, uh, checking in or, or clicking into the gateway um, to other realms, the angel. I like this more than the usual uh, temperance, so... Like, I'm not an angel person. I usually avoid cards with angels because I'm um, decks with angels because I just don't really believe in them in the way that a lot of decks portray them. Or, and I don't think about angels very much. That's not my spiritual thing too much. This is badass. Um, the Empress. Like, she is connected in in a way that we all probably wish. And look, the emperor popping up next to her. I like how the folds in their robes uh, kind of tie them together. And if we put them in order, he's looking at her while she's looking deeper in. Um, or even if he's not looking at her, he's looking outward and she's looking inward. Oh, the demon... There's a lot going on here. The uh, Magus, and I appreciate that this is a seemingly female presenting card. Uh, the Chancellor, Angel of Justice. Hollowed Flame. I don't know what to say about this card it just other than like that flame is very detailed. Uh, just the Awakening. I'm awake. The Priestess. I see a lot of the majors are coming up. I love the ginormous moon and um, the what is this fruit again? Uh, you, pomegranate. The pomegranate. The towers. The towers. The the two poles on either side of her are very detailed. Um, they're not just these two 
one black and one white and I appreciate that um, and she's veiled and has got this figure on her forehead um, and like I like that both the priestess and the empress kind of have that look to them I feel like I just keep picking up the major cards here I keep touching the cards like that's gonna bring the camera into focus let's see the haunt I mean it's still keeping that feeling this is the um, nine of swords and one of the first cards I completely connected with and understood in um, Rider Waite Smith uh, tarot decks because it's just obvious to me and I like how it's got like another dimension but in, in several aspects there's someone else they're trying to reach them in bed but barred and then there's the shadow of uh like the devil or the demon and then there's just just this long hallway of to get through or to depending a herald of waters like we we're starting something new inspire the prodigy this is just an absolutely gorgeous card point blank period the erudite um i very much align with this the hermit of mysteries the captor not only of yourself and then I don't know if that's a red sun or a red moon, but interesting. I love all the three cards. Like, I always like the three cards, but I feel like this deck takes it to another level, which is not a surprise because the three cards. Um, let's find something else. Eminence here. I'm trying to give, like, some first impression stuff. Right? The nine of orbs. I like how this is not typical like this is one of my favorite cards in the tarot deck almost every time there's very rarely i don't like the nine of pentacles or nine of coins or in this case nine of orbs um but i recently acknowledged that it's very you know materialistic and it's not everything um and life and This one kind of shows that they got what they need for now. And there's also something watching over them. The Shining Quarry. Caverns of the Gnome. Gnome, excuse me. So, uh, a knight of points or pentacles and very interesting so this is this is one of the cards and I did notice this on other ones uh, some of the people and animal don't have pupils so be aware of that it's interesting that uh, the gnome here does though so as they float there very, very, very interesting. And the Pegasus. Ooh, the Sacred Sword. These aces are like very fancy. <laughs> I always have words, but it's just like, wow. The crowning. But the shield behind it. The two of swords being the blind seer, like, guess she's blind. Yeah, there are choices to be made. Oops, sorry for hitting the camera there. But also, you know, she sees from within rather than without. Um, this is not as a uh, desperate feeling or as uh worrisome a card or anxious a card here like there are other tools maybe she sat down and did this on purpose um to not be distracted let's see the healer 
this is um uh i saw this a lot i think in the uh i think it's on the cover of one of the other decks and this very much reminds me of Kuan yin the lotus the two bottle types um that star energy gifts of the spirit appreciate that so i could see like working with this deck like esoterically magic um spiritually or whatever like bringing forth this energy um in a magical uh intentional way um and you like recognize certain deities you can in these images you can use them that way the two of orbs this this balance this connection but also is it frayed there let me let me see hmm it's either, either it's coming together or falling apart we don't know but her facial expression seems okay with that so I'm gonna go with it. Like, look at those guys. They're they're so like. It feels like I should feel the bevels in the crystals orb she's holding. The politics. So the three of scepters, three of wands. I don't think I've come across this particular uh, interpretation of this card. I don't have a huge in-depth uh, knowledge of the tarot in that I've read all the major books or anything like that. It's the idea of different leaders, different political ideas, different um, uh, spheres of influence, uh, power, charisma, that kind of thing coming together, together um, to work on something. Um, the different beliefs is very interesting to me and to see in a tarot card the sun and the Aries though hmm. it's not going to be all fun and games not going to be all uh, good times or an easy agreement there <laughs> The Archangel of Glory, so Angel of Art and Grace, and you know, wands make sense, but Archangels are like the king equivalents in this, if I'm remembering correctly. I don't think the King of Wands or the Knight of Wands in the Thoth Tower really gets this uh, side explored. But it fits, so I'm with it. The Dark Horse, the Seven of Scepters. Like, honestly, this card, when I saw, because um, this is one of the cards that Benabelle showed herself working on on Instagram. Like, this person looks like a, a ninja, which is extra cool. And then, like, they've got a spirit, a deity, or something watching over them in the background, and they're actively fighting back. There's a, a feeling of they've got the experience of practice and, and, and maybe even battle to add to their protectiveness of whatever it is. So they might be being watched over or protecting this being back here. Um, or even trying to get through because the lattice work with the um, six wands blocking them, being held by other people, is very interesting. So they could be protecting what's behind it or trying to go past who knows? The Herald of the Winds. So there's this is one of the cards that gives like a Romany feel, kind of like the uh, 
one, one of them we looked at earlier, the Nine of Orbs. But I don't usually think of Romany and Swords. That could just be, you know, uh, my personal experiences and how they're portrayed in uh, history and popular culture, which is not really um, nicely, but the wagon is there. I'm not sure what this down here is. A scroll that looks similar to the ones in the pages or the heralds, but... Ventures of the Dauntless. Like, I guess we're going to keep going forward with protection. And there's something written on it. Can I get close enough to see? I don't know what that is. So, I tried, guys. But if you do, feel free to say something. The lovers, like, this is a lot. This is... This, <laughs> this is very esoteric. I'm not sure... I'm not sure. Like, the Tree of Life is there, but we don't see the the last uh, orb down there. We see it kind of off to the side in this tree. There's the snake, the temptation, if we're looking at the Bible, I guess. The... Arrows, the law of providence. I'll have to look up any kind of Latin phrases because there are a lot in this deck. I don't know Latin. So, there's that. <laughs> but, the eagle and the dragon. And the scepter. Um, having this phallic thing going into a receptacle um thing is very great right um ish if you know what i mean let's look at a different night the waves of undine or undine do tell me in the comments i've n i don't know if i've heard that word out well before now i'm thinking about it i could be wrong the shining waters just, I don't know why this feels like several steps in a sequence. Like this figure here in this puddle of water. And then the Knight of Cups here with this very nice uh, cloak thing on. And their Pegasus. And then this kind of shield water thing. Um... I don't know what to say about that. This one, like I said, uh, when I was flipping through, the grotesque is not expected uh, for this card. From a Rider Waite Smith point of view, I guess. From the Thoth Tarot, I obviously see it, but it's still like, huh. Why that word usage? And it's the the glyphs up here are Mars and Scorpio, so I'm extra interested. <laughs> the Hierophant is not a card that I particularly like in any deck. This one I do, though. Master of the Arcanes. So it's a little bit different. A little bit different. The Mason, I think, is absolutely amazing. I already talked about how much I love the threes in this deck. But showing the work created is a good idea. The Pugilist confused me. I mentioned that before. Uh, the Joined One. One. Not two, even though there are two hands here. I appreciate this alternative look um because there's always that when two become one um meaning behind this card but the artwork usually shows the beforehand um and i think this is more implying like they've become one kind of already 
the initiate another uh significator card one on your journey let's i wanted to the conservator this card the four of orbs of uh, four of pentacles or four of coins often gives me a feel of miserliness uh concern about losing your material goods and, and therefore your foundation your safety um in life and you know that probably speaks more about me than about the card but um this one gives a whole different feel to me like yes there is possibility for that but these are orbs and this is you know the conservator it looks kind of like a library or a um museum so holding on to history and knowledge and wisdom in a different way so this was a long one but I really did want to do a walkthrough and first impressions all together. So I hope you found this interesting. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you have gotten this deck. Um, any versions of it, to be perfectly honest. And what was your experiences with it? I know I asked like questions about like how is this pronounced and other such things along the way so if you do have answers to that I would really appreciate it um, but you don't have to I definitely feel like it lives up to its name as the spirit keepers tarot I definitely feel like there are spirits in here or there could be spirits in here um, it can be awoken in a sense and um, it could be used spiritually as well as esoterically. Like, there doesn't need to be a spiritual element to it. Um, so more magically and uh, wisdom and knowledge, if you separate the two. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. You know, day by day. Uh, I feel like this and my orb are going to live close together um and yeah i've got nothing else to say right now like this video if you liked it that would help me very much i would so appreciate it uh leave a comment down below um you can leave a little a little card emoji there if you want to help with don't have anything specific to say um and Hit the subscribe button if you want to follow me. I This is the last new deck I'm buying. I, minus anything I might get as a gift during the holiday season. But um, this is the last deck I've purchased in 2021. So probably the last deck, first impressions and walkthrough. So um planning for next year to be more spread reviews more about the deck studies i'm doing and um more deck so more also deck reviews starting next year so if that sounds of interest to you please hit subscribe button hit the notification bell so you know be notified when those new videos come out I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>